Hello, and welcome to the panel discussion presented as part of the Open Day at the Australian National University College of Law. My name is Temi Temilalua Oladiji, and I am a Marketing and Communications Coordinator at the College. Today we are joined by various international law students who will be sharing some of their experiences here at ANU. Um, so would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, um, my name is Epi and I'm a final year law student, uh, JD student from the Philippines. My name is Sarah and I'm a final year Bachelor of Law student from Singapore. My name is Jack Lee, I come from China and uh, this is my second year Juris Doctorate degree. Hello everyone, my name is Kriti, I'm doing my Juris Doctorate over here in my second last year of degree and my country of origin is India. Awesome, thank you. Now, the past couple of years have presented significant challenges for international students. Lockdown, groundings of international flights and the remote study in home countries have been a reality for many. However, we're very thankful that we're able to welcome international students back to Canberra this year and this has really enriched student life. So what is it like to be an international student in Australia's National Law School? What are some of the opportunities and rewards for students? And what do you need to know about Canberra to thrive as an international student? The answers to these questions and more are coming up. Now, before we begin our discussion, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose land and airwaves we gather today and pay my respects to the elders past and present of the Gunawal and Nambri people who are the traditional owners here in Canberra, where our ANU campus is situated. I'd also like to pay and extend my respects to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers watching this session. To begin our, uh, to begin our discussion, can you all share a little bit about why you chose to study at ANU? I think for me, um, it's the electives, um, most of all, that um, shaped my decision to study in ANU. I think um, with the electives that uh, ANU Law School offers um, sh um, shows versatility and it shows it gives you the ability to personalize your degree on your interest and what you want to do with your law degree. I really liked where ANU was situated. I thought it was really cool that you know we could take a bus down to the High Court and Canberra has a really good combination of city life and peacefulness. Well, I have to say, uh, the competition was really tough. So maybe it's the ANU picked me rather than I picked the ANU. <laughs> but get back to your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, the, it's a reputation. It's a renowned university. So whenever you get the chance and you receive the offer, what I can do is humbly accept it. Um, well, it was one of my dreams to study at ANU since I was at high school. So. Um, Probably for all sorts of reasons that Epi and my other friends have said, um, definitely providing that flexibility and um, the reputation that ANU has. I remember when I was at high school, it was um, under the top 10 universities in the world. So it really has that sort of quality education and the academics over here are, you know, you can see they are the authors of the books that they write. So it's a very uh, prestigious thing to be studying over here and I'm glad to be here. Oh yeah, I, I definitely agree with what um, you all have said. I mean, ANU of course does have an amazing reputation and the quality of education that we provide here is amazing. But also where it is situated in Canberra is also quite fascinating and beautiful because it's, um, it's, it really is a mix of like city life and peaceful life. So it's quite, it's quite a tranquil place to study, definitely. Now, um, I'll begin with you, Sarah. What is the teaching delivery like at the ANU College of Law? Well, currently because of COVID, we've got an interesting mix of well, what we call hybrid classes where you go to lectures in person or watch them online and you can choose to take online or in-person tutorials. But either way, there's always an excellent amount of interaction with tutors and lecturers and consultation hours are regular every week and there's plenty of opportunity to learn directly with, with your really renowned scholars and to gain their insight. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really great, and it's very interesting to see how um, obviously like academics have really adapted to the very interesting situation that COVID um, presented. Um, now, Jack, is the teaching delivery del different for you as um, a JD student? 
Yeah, just as Sarah said, it's hybrid. I would say the JD program is uh, hybrid plus. From the one, <laughs> yeah. On, on the one hand, uh, now you can you got the online and offline study, and at the same time, the JD do share some calls with the LLB, and at the same time, share the calls with the LLM. So I think you'll find. Uh, if you got the chance to enroll, to enroll the JD degrees, you'll find that's an um, unusual assignment. Yeah, definitely. And we'll definitely discuss um, a little bit more about that um, going forward. Um, so we're just going to take a quick break. Now, Kriti, um, you have said that obviously you've come from India to study here at ANU College of Law. Um, what has been your experience like, obviously, studying in India and then coming to study here, particularly with your experience with academics? Um, so I did my undergrad in India and it was, uh, I did it at, you know, the top 10 universities over there. So. Um, I don't know about other universities, but where I studied in India, um, the, prof the professors were very um, amiable and very approachable uh, as well. So um, I, I was probably one of the favorites. <laughs> but um, over here, I think that's probably, uh, it's a mix uh, experience that I've had um, in my JD program. Um, some of the professors are very approachable and they really like to discuss um, their topics and themes, whereas uh, some professors really, um, I wouldn't say they limit uh, themselves to the lectures itself, but it's probably the hybrid uh, um, uh, quality of teaching as well, like with Zooms and stuff, it doesn't give um, that sort of student-professor interaction opportunity to happen, so yeah. Yeah, I, I, I completely um, agree with that. And I can also see why like um, we've had to have hybrid where, you know, sometimes we've had to have classes in person because, um, you know, COVID did present, like I said, a very interesting situation with um, having to juggle like um, developing like that academic student relationship and also like trying to stay safe and you know um, given the circumstances but um, yeah that that is very much an experience that I think a lot of people um, um, have had and um, moving forward we're really hoping that um, you know we can go back to the way it was pre-pandemic and really have things in person a lot more. Just going around very quickly um, we might start with Jack, um, can you share what was your biggest challenge that you faced when you um, were moving from your home country and like settling down into ANU? Well, I, I, I would nominate uh, a poetic one. I think it's nostalgia. Uh, I mean, the homesick. Um, whenever you move from somewhere you live for 20 years to some a whole new place, you'll miss the past, like especially the food, friends. <laughs> family and sometimes just the good memories. But I believe maybe in the future when I moved somewhere else, I would also miss here. But, but perhaps I would not move away. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I think a lot of students um, feel very, um, very homesick and things like that. Um, but yeah, and I think that's also like the beauty of having different people from different cultures all together. Because I mean, you, like you're homesick, but you can be homesick together, as sad as that, that, that sounds. And you're gonna, um, you kind of connect with those people in that way. Um, what about you, Sarah? Well, I guess a little bit more specific than homesickness, it was quite tough dealing with, you know, illness or, you know, ill health in general without family close by, you know, yeah. whether it's a car ride away or a short plane trip away. Um, because of that, you know, I did appreciate how the College of Law was quite flexible with stuff like um, extensions and compassion extended by lecturers and stuff, and that's how I've gotten through it so far. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Yeah. Okay. For me, I, I, I would be honest here. I'm like, I struggled in the beginning academically. Um, the way of writing here in ANU is like top notch. Um, you need to be able to have structure in your writing, um, be able to signpost effectively, if, um, create good headings, all those stuff. At the beginning, I didn't know none of that. 
Um, but then throughout my experience, throughout the years that I study, you later pick up on those on, on these things um, through the advice of your upperclassmen, advice of your professors. I mean, I think being able to know where to find help is is a big thing. Um, but yeah, that was my struggle from from the start. Yeah. But even now, I'm still learning. <laughs> of course. Um, and I'm really glad that you brought that up because um, we'll talk about that a little bit more about, you know, the different challenges of, you know, um, studying and like learn writing and, you know, doing all these presentations and stuff like that. Um, not just at a, like, at a university that has quite a high standard, but in a language that might not even be your first language. So um, we'll touch on that a little bit later on. So thank you for sharing that, Effie. Um, Kriti? Um, I think moving to a different country obviously brings a lot of independence, um, but with that there's always a challenge uh, you know, about it can be overwhelming um, all at the start as to you know, um, having that independence, but also at the same time you have to decide where to live, what to buy, where to shop, um, how to do the referencing. So I'm glad that we had academic skills you know, <laughs> helping us out, but um, all those sorts of minute, um, and also lack of emotional uh, pillars in your life as well, you know, uh, less of friends, everybody's new and strange. So it's difficult to transition. And yeah, I'm sure it, uh, you know, one overcomes after a certain period of time, but yeah, it's just, initial bits. Yeah, oh, for sure. Definitely agree with that. Um, settling into a new place, into a just not even just like a new university, but like a new city altogether and having to relearn everything again and meet new people can be very overwhelming. So yeah, definitely um, something to, <laughs> to note. Uh, now, Epi, you have an amazing track record with the um, how, just how involved you are with um, ANU College of Law, extracurricular activities. You have, your list is amazing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you got to be just so involved in everything that you do and how that has shaped your student experience? Yes, um, to me, um, I approach, approach it like a step ladder. Um, from the, begin, uh, the beginning I came here, I just wanted to put myself out there, um, explore the opportunities around me. And basically, the first ones I saw were like, oh, you want to join the Law Student Society? Um, then there was Parsa. And so I was like, okay, I'm interested in this and I'm going to join put my hand up for these opportunities. And it kind of like snowballed from there, <laughs> um, from one thing to another. Yeah. But then I think my main takeaway there is really being open to opportunities. And at the same time, having an open mind, a um, little bit of confidence in yourself um, that you might be able to um, do things that at first might be a bit scary, but then just trust yourself. Oh, 110%. And I, I, I really agree with that, that it can be very intimidating to kind of put yourself out there and join all these societies. But um, all across, like I've heard amazing stories of students who, you know, through these societies have been able to actually get, be um, more in integrated into the College of Law and like meet new people and make amazing, like long lasting, you know, relationships that have even sustained themselves even after they've gone back to their home country. So it's, it's a really, really good idea to um, really get involved in, in those type of activities. Now, um, going back to the conversation we were having before about you know studying um and maintaining like a high level of um of of work um now law is a very intensive subject to study and uh and the the level that is required for high grades can be quite intimidating at times especially if english is not your second language it is not your first language now um jack how did you combat this what was your experience with um you know reading and writing in in um in english and if you even know about experiences of other people feel free to share as well the old word said um practice makes perfect um with a quote from associate professor ryan goes being a lawyer is being a reader and being a lawyer is being a writer i appreciate it just mentioned the reading and writing uh, actually it's the common sense but lots of people just maybe ignore that those of things and it's really the law school style is really about writing and reading perhaps sometimes plus a little bit about speaking and the more time and the effort you invest you'll get the paid in the long run i mean 
And as for, I mean, th there are lots of supporting services. Um, for example, what I know, um, speed reading, help you academic writing, and sometimes no need to mention about uh, speaking and uh, hearing. We we always talk in English. So uh, yeah, I, I believe there are lots of where there is a will, there is service. So as long as you want to learn the English, you will always find a way. But yeah. that's quite simple, but most people just um, try, try to come, come out and try to find the, whether there is a shortcut. But yeah. honestly speaking, I don't believe there is a shortcut. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You need to put in the work. Um, and it's definitely not easy, but I do think that it's very rewarding, um, you know, and you'll be able to see like that difference when you do take a step out there and try to find, you know, the different services that ANU offers that can help, um, you know, bridge that gap and making sure that like your writing and your reading is up to um, a high standard. So yeah, thank you so much um, for sharing that. Um, now, Epi, socially speaking, um, how did you find it settling into ANU? Because um, I would imagine Imagine that as an international student, you can be quite nervous leaving your community, mm -hmm. your family, your friends behind and coming into a new place. Yeah. Um, how did you settle down um, in that aspect and what are some of the recommendations that you would give for people who are considering moving to Canberra to study here? Yeah. But, but first, I think I would clarify that when I came here, my siblings were here already. Uh, so right. I had a bit of um, yeah. a smoother curve. But then. <laughs> Um, my parents, um, my siblings were here, but they were in another university. So when I came here, I was the only um, one who was, who was in the ANU. Um, so what I, I think uh, is the hack there is trying to find people on the same wavelength as you. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to show up to events um, that interests you. And you know, there, since there are people there that has a, on the same wavelength as you, they would be able to find you. They would find you and they're willing to help you as well, mentor you. For me, um, I wouldn't be in a place like this, um, no, having a huge network without people helping me as well to build my own network. So I think for me, um, as I've said earlier, don't be ap afraid to put yourself out there and don't be afraid to express yourself. Oh, completely agree with that. Um, events are such a great way to meet people because people who are going to events that you like would like hopefully like the same things that you do and it's a great way to just like start a conversation and like meet really great people too um so completely agree with that as well Sarah, given your experience um, with law programs and law clinics and all of these extra things that are uh, meant to boost employability, um, can you tell us a little bit more, first of all, about what these programs that you've been involved in are? And do you feel that international students who study at ANU College of Law have good like, career pro prospects after studying here? I guess the first sort of program I'll touch upon is the community law clinic that I was a part of. Um, the College of Law runs a few courses that are termed clinics wherein you basically do an internship throughout the semester as a course, but on top of that, you also um, write a research paper for the institution you're working for and also, you know, go for a few lectures or, you know, seminars that they run. So it's a really interesting, more hands-on course for your law degree. and. I would say it was a really good boost to my employability in the sense that it gave me really good connections to Australian lawyers or just legal professionals in general. I forged, you know, long-standing, you know, bonds with mentors who are, you know, willing to talk to me after my degree is done. And on top of that, I would say the other programs at the law school have also helped with regards to, you know, my career prospects. We have a in-house, you know, um, career team that can help with, you know, building your CV or practicing for interviews. And although it's always going to be tough as an international student to, you know, get a job because of your visa status and all, we have a, you know, a wonderful team of support here at 
to law school. Yeah, yeah, you've made you've made some really um, interesting points about you know the the different um, services that are available. So um, you know if you are interested in you know like putting the work in, especially early on, I think it's always like easy to start early on during your degree and make um, like plan and make those, um, you know, changes ahead of time so that, you you know, you, you have a lot of time to really forge those relationships with um, with the with the relevant people so that you can get where you need to be. So, yeah, thank you for sharing about that. Um, now, a lot of international students will have to combine work and study um, to just kind of manage the expenses of being in Australia. Now, Krithi, you have amazing experience because you don't just work part time, you work full time while also studying full time. Can you share a little bit about your experience doing that and as well as, you know, some of the people you know who do study part time, do you think that the workload is manageable? Um, I would say it depends on the type of work. So um, I work for the government here and I work in the legal policy area. Um, so it is very related to the work that I do, um, my studies. Um, for example, I just finished last semester studying about admin law and I am doing a lot of work in relation to it. So it's, it's uh, probably merits of uh, studying in Canberra as well. You get that sort of opportunity to work uh, with such, you know, government agencies. But in terms of managing uh, both, I think if you like your job, if you're passionate about it, and if you're passionate about law, then it's very much doable. You have to be very structured and very organized in your day-to-day -day life. And perhaps it may mean lesser time to pursue some sort, sort of social activities or maybe negotiating on your uh, you know, uh, hobbies, etc. But it is definitely rewarding um, in the end. When you see good grades and when you um, get good promotions at work, then yeah, why not? Yeah, I, I completely agree. And um, we do have a careers newsletter that usually goes out to um, students. So even if you do like come into um, Australia and you start um, working, you know, as a waitress or whatever it is that you can find, um, you can then make that transition into um, a into a position that relates to your law degree so that you're getting that added benefit as well. So I think that's really great to, um, to touch on that point. Um, now, last question, very quickly, we're just gonna go around. What would be one reason that you would recommend an international student to study at the ANU College of Law? Good question. I think for me, the ability to personalize your degree on what you want to do later on in life. Sarah? I would say that academics here are really friendly and personable and they value your insight as much as you value theirs. So, you know, come here for the good interaction with really acclaimed scholars. Yeah. I would say so. Um, the fantastic teaching team, great professors, like I just mentioned. <laughs> um, I would agree with you guys. Uh, it's just the quality of education and also ANU has a very good reputation in public service and also in private sector, so definitely a very good point to you know, pursue your career and start your degree here. Yeah, um, amazing, amazing, amazing answers as always. I think um, the one thing that still continues to bring people um, to ANU is always the reputation, but also the amazing teaching team that we have. So it's great to see that um, that is very much true and not just made up and our international students have experience um, with, those, with those amazing teachers as well. Um, well, that brings us to the end of our conversation. Thank you all to our wonderful panelists. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences um, on your ex um, on the way that you've um, learned to study law here at ANU. Um, now, if you'd like to learn more about um, studying at the ANU College of Law, please feel free to visit law.anu.edu.au or click the link in our description. Thank you all so much and goodbye for now.